if you think Tenerife is just bars, clubs and all-inclusive resorts, then you're not completely wrong. However, step outside those resorts and you will see that there is so much more to this incredible island. Getting to Tenerife is inexpensive. Flights leave from cities across the UK and out of season, a low-cost carrier will usually only cost you around about £100 return, with most flights arriving at Tenerife's South Airport. My biggest bit of advice is when you get to Tenerife, rent a car because they really don't cost very much and will take you all over the island. Plus, it's a really easy island to drive around and this rent a car that we've got this time is costing just 44 euros. Not bad for a whole week. If you're looking for the sunshine, then the south is definitely the best part of the island to come to. Temperatures between April and November normally mean t-shirt weather, with June to August being the hottest. Although usually the cheapest area and actually quite picturesque, my advice would be to avoid staying on the Costa Gulf. It's a little too far away from the main restaurants and bars and a little too close to the airport. Now, you know I like planes, but one of these going overhead every couple of minutes while you're trying to enjoy a mojito, no thank you. At the other end of the scale is Las Americas. Again, cheaper than other areas in the south, but this is right in the heart of tourist town. Any preconceptions of club 18 to 30 type bars and 24 hour clubs can be found right here. And although the beaches are actually lovely, I would recommend staying next door. Los Cristianos is definitely my first choice of where to stay. In fact, my family have been coming here since the 80s. I was just really small when I first came here. And I've seen it change a lot over the years, from its small fishing village roots, through the 90s when it joined its neighbor, Las Americas, to become a bit of a club mecca, sort of 24 hour all nighter, to now where thankfully it's sort of mellowed out a bit and is somewhere in between. Yes, there are still the one Euro British pubs. In fact, you can see just a couple of them over there. But on the whole, it's brilliant. There's top rated restaurants and the best bit, all of it is very affordable. So you've arrived on your cheap flight, hired a car and made your way to your hotel or apartment. Now what? Well, I'm guessing that you've come for the sunshine. So my first recommendation would be just chill out for the first couple of days. If you are staying in Los Cristianos, everything is on your doorstep and there's really no need to travel too far, especially if the sun is out because you're going to love it. The next thing you need to do whilst in Tenerife is get out on a boat. The sea goes all the way around the island and there are plenty of opportunities to go whale and dolphin spotting. Yet yeah, it's slightly touristy, but it is brilliant. My advice would be to shop around before getting your tickets. There are plenty of excursions available. I find the smaller boats to be more fun. If you're feeling more adventurous, then at the beach near El Medano, there are surf schools. You can try your hand at windsurfing, surfing or even kite surfing. And if you're not afraid of the deep, there are plenty of opportunities around Tenerife to go scuba diving as well. For a cultural break whilst on Tenerife, then head to Santa Cruz. This is the capital of the island and it's where you'll find the museums and theatres. It's definitely less touristy than the south, but you'll still find shops and cafes just with a little less English people. My next three sightseeing spots can actually all be done in one day with a hire car heading west from the south you'll end up in Masca. Now this is somewhere you'll definitely need your camera because it is simply breathtaking, filled with valleys and winding roads that are stunning. You follow the roads all the way around and you'll end up in Garachico. This is one of the oldest villages on the island, is extremely pretty and the perfect place to stop for lunch whilst taking in the views and the rather dramatic coastline. Leaving Garachico, the roads start going from west to east. Now, if you follow this round, you'll end up at Icod. I used to say that this was the oldest tree on the island and one of the oldest trees in the world. Now, we're not quite sure whether that's true, but either way, it's definitely worth a stop off on your way back home to the south. The Anaga Mountains of Tenerife occupy the northeast part of the island. This is the most green part of Tenerife, covered with rainforest at higher altitudes. If you like walking and hiking, then this is definitely the area for you. There are trails all over the place, signposted for different abilities. 
supposedly somewhere in Spain every day there's a festival and if you're lucky enough to be on Tenerife when there's a local fiesta here then my advice would be get stuck in. You're going to have loads of fun and it is always 99.9% completely safe. Number two on my list of things to do in Tenerife is Siam Park. Yes, this is rather touristy, but it's actually voted the number one water park in the world. I've been three times in the last few years and can promise that it is definitely worth the cost of the ticket. Number one on my list is simply a must-do and is something that draws me back to the island time and time again. The breathtaking national park of Mount Tady. And here's a secret not many people know. If it gets cloudy on the beach, then the best thing you can do is jump in the rental car and head up Tady because you are always guaranteed to be above the clouds. The National Park is 3,000 metres above sea level, so visit from December to February and you'll see the usual desert-like landscape transformed into a winter wonderland. If you've got a head for heights, you can take the cable car even higher. A further 1,500 metres will get you almost to the top of Mount Tady. Unfortunately, you can't go to the very top because that's protected, but on a good day, you're still high enough to see all seven Canary Islands. So there you have it. There's my take on Tenerife, an island that I love. And I think you'll agree there is plenty to do here. But the island does hold one more ace in the deck. Once you've seen the sights of Tenerife, there are loads of options to jump on a ferry and see some of the other Canary Islands as well. Thank you for liking this video and subscribing to my page. You can do that on YouTube or facebook.com forward slash Captain Globals. Plenty more videos still to come.